wears a hatchet for the badass ninja. Darren, Hatchet has gone on to be a, I guess, has a cult following now. It's, it's gone into the realm of action figures. I guess his name is Victor Crowley or Crawley. Crowley. Uh, same, whatever. Uh, <laughs> same thing. It's being played by uh, Kane Hodder of Friday the 13th fame. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, This I, I quite liked the original Hatchet. The other ones were kind of went on and they were just getting ridiculous and, you know, there was plane crashes and all sorts of things. Daniel Harris coming in and out of the series. And I think they did three. And then they did like a one called Victor Crowley, didn't they? Yeah. Um, but for me, the first one was always the, the nice surprise. Because it was a kind of homage to um, camp slasher movies. And even scenes in there that were sort of homage to um, Toby Hooper's Eaten Alive. Or what was the other title for Eaten Alive? Death Trap, Horror Hotel, and Starlight Slaughter. Yeah. It, you got it, all had, those. It had lots of different names. But there's an opening sequence in this film with uh, Robert uh, England uh, and his son. A real kind of homophobic scene as well. Mm. Uh, <laughs> where he's shouting at his son and there's alligators are there and grabs his son by the... Does he grab him by, his, by the leg? Alligator comes out, attacks his son, and then... Then we don't really see what happens to Robert England, but uh, we'll get into that anyway. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, yeah, Hatchet, Adam Green, back in 2006. Adam Green directed Frozen as well. I don't know if you remember that one. Where the uh, Disney movie? No, let it go, Frank. Um, okay. <laughs> um, no, the um, the one where the kids get stuck on the chairlift. Mm. And their hands are stuck to it. They can't get down or they have an appeal and, you know. Um, yeah, good little tense, little kind of claustrophobic thriller that he did there. And he's, I know Adam Green's pitch for Halloween films in the past, but hasn't really had that huge break that he kind of needs to break out. But yeah. watching his movies, they are kind of just like trash, really, aren't they? They're good fun, but they're kind of, they're really kind of lowest common denominator. And uh, there's, uh, whilst <laughs> the scripts are a bit ridiculous, um, but. I guess with Hatchet, you can have fun with it in some ways. And they they actually they show these uh, the, the series, the Hatchet series, on on the Sci Fi Channel over here, and it's brutally cut. But Is it really? Yeah, yeah, brutally cut. Okay. And but they put it on there. They take about a half hour out. Yeah. Of the movie, and they throw in some TV cuts in there, and it just it it kind of you could kind of say to yourself that this movie. If he took away the gore, could be made for a TV movie. It really could. Yeah, the, uh, yeah. ruin it. There's no plot. No, absolutely no plot. Not like we're going to do after this one, we're going to do Cabin in the Woods. That's quite dense in terms of a, a horror movie plot. But this, it's just nonsense, really, isn't it? But yeah. fun nonsense. Yeah, you go for the gore. Yeah, exactly. exactly. And that's the, fun, that's the fun part of it, the yeah. gore. Yeah. The one thing I have to say I don't like about the Hatchet character is his constant jerking. Jerking? Oh, I see what you mean. He's had a it's like the Talking time. Heads video, Darren. It's like you know the the, the, the what's that one where you, you know he's he's uh, is it is it uh, Wonder Wheel? Water Wheel? Water Wheel? What is it? Talking Heads. Hey, you may find yourself. Ooh, ooh. You may ask yourself. <laughs> okay. As the words go by, when the water falling down. Oh yeah. Permanent days go by. You may ask once, yourself. Once in a lifetime. Yeah, <laughs> once, yeah. once in a lifetime. <laughs> yeah. That's it. Hey, he's jerking. Remember him? He's, like, he's just like, oh, what's the lead singer's David, name? We're talking. David heads. Byrne. Yeah, Oscar nominated. Uh, that, that video. Yeah, for everything, everywhere, all at once. Oh uh, right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And then, <laughs> but in that video, it's all... <laughs> Victor Crowley. Yeah, Kane. that's all him. Just... <laughs> Kane Hodder. He had to bring something different to the character. And, you know, 
it's pretty unfortunate what happens to the, to to Victor Crowley. He's kind of protected by his dad. Um, he's bullied by the kids. It's just kind of same old story. With this, it's kind of an amalgamation. trope, yeah. Yeah, it's an amalgamation of sort of of Jason Voorhees, uh, Cropsey, and Madman or something, right? Yeah, <laughs> got it all there, yeah, all diced and packaged. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No TP around. No, no, and and that, well, that's what it is. And <laughs> and uh, and 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 his father, who's played by Kane Hodder, so Kane Hodder plays uh, 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 Crowley as well as his dad as well, and, and himself, so, and himself. <laughs> yeah, whatever. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, so Kane Hodder plays uh, Crowley and his dad. And he's very protected of his son. He puts a hoodie over him so the kids can't see him and his deformities, that kind of stuff. And there's a time where uh, the, the, the cabin that they live in is on fire and his dad's trying to get to him and he's sticking an axe through the door. And he sticks it, unfortunately, right in Victor Crowley's face. So if he didn't look bad enough, he's now got a huge axe wound down his face there so i guess that there must have been some trauma to his brain hence it's a talking all, point yeah hence all the jerking around i guess you <laughs> i know? guess i don't know <laughs> be like damn it'd be like damn victor what the hell happened to your face you got a big scar going across <laughs> <laughs> but you know he kind of legend has it that he died and um we get this uh uh, this this girl is is setting out looking for a, a a family who have gone missing. A dad and a brother have gone missing, so she joins up on this kind of uh, bayou tour, uh, if you like. Um, and on that tour, there's also a, a bunch of guys and an older couple uh, and a guy making a porno with two young girls. Um, so that's where our film kicks off. They all go out on this tour and they find out that maybe or not. Crowley is still alive. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And the name Hatchet, of course, I guess, from the from the wound he got. And we also there's actually a lot of people in movie history that's actually been named Hatchet. Yeah, Hatchet Face, which is from um Crybaby. Yeah. The John Waters movie oh, okay. with Johnny yeah, Depp. Yeah. yeah. Hatchet. Yeah. Hatchet Face yeah. was the girl's name. Yeah. Uh, and uh I think there's actually been a few movies called Hatchet. Uh has it? type of B-movies and everything. Okay. Um, I think there's a few comic book characters actually called Hatchet. So it's not really a a, a Oppenheimer Oscar <laughs> nominated nothing like that movie. Uh, but it's still fun, it as we fun. said. I don't even it think is it, fun. it got... I don't think it got a cinema release in the UK. I'm pretty sure it didn't. I think it just went straight to, to, to VHS or whatever. What year was it? 2006? Yeah, straight to, to DVD or something like that. Yeah. I mean, yeah. the whole goal is to become a NECA figure. I guess so. I guess so. Which this is, which he's become. But he's we, actually, he, he's gone down as being a cult classic now. Yeah, I guess so. He's, he's, he was not got that icon status though at all, has he? Uh, he's not know, Mount Rushmore. It no. kind of, it kind of sort of plateaued. So Victor Crowley was hot and then he just stayed flatlined i guess you know it didn't really peak with any of the other films or they didn't really capitalize on the success um they just kind of you know made them cheaply and were able to make three or four of them um but it did they were um lucky enough to be able to um entice people like tony todd and robert england and also john carl beekler as well who's got a cameo in this film so you know it's kind of a there's a lot of little nods and winks and tip of the hat to, to the horror genre throughout this whole film. It's, it's, yeah. it's fine. I like it. I don't mind it. I enjoyed watching it today. Unfortunately, when I think of uh, Victor Crowley, uh, I see John Merrick. Yeah. Yeah. I see one day him into the opera box with his monocle. <laughs> you think you could tame Victor Crowley? <laughs> Take him to the take him to the opera. <laughs> Have him meet the queen or now the king. Yeah, yeah, you know? exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Could you imagine? Just, just <laughs> you know, he's he's there at the, the opera. And he's in the he's in the uh, what do they call it the uh, the balcony box. Yeah, and he's just sitting there, <laughs> just sitting there during the whole performance. 
Usher comes in and just tells him, uh, excuse me, sir, you're going to have to be quiet during the performance. Just rips his head off. <laughs> Throws it on stage. Third Hamlet. <laughs> Yeah, I think we're, uh, yeah, I get what you're saying, though. The makeup is very similar to John Hurt in The Elephant Man, right? Yeah, yeah. 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 It's yeah. just really, for some reason, I just want to go up there and just, just Glug poke it. On his face. Yeah, just, or, or just, or lick it for some reason. Oh, I'm not sure about that. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to be like, I, I just, something makes me want to chew you. No, after that goo that he's vomiting later on in the film. Yeah, yeah. It's like, you look like gum. <laughs> All right. All right, your best character, Hatchet 2026 for Badass Ninja. I think it's got to be Mary Beth. 2006, I said. 2026. <laughs> Samara Zaragoza, hmm. uh, who, who plays uh, Mary Beth Dunstan. She's the one that's, going, that's out there looking for her dad and her brother. Um, she kind of, you know, some of the characters are kind of a bit larger than life in this film, a bit ridiculous. Um, but she kind of, she kind of brings a bit of levity and leadership to this, uh, this bunch of people. Um, so I kind of liked her character. I thought she was pretty solid. I can't even remember. I've seen the other films. Does she appear in the other films? No. Nope. Danielle Harris takes over. That's right. Yeah. 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 I guess. Yeah. I guess with the end. For better or worse. Yeah. Yeah. Let's do it to your own. Hmm. Um, I can see why you picked her because she's actually really is a strong female lead in this. Hmm. Really good, very good, very cute too. Um, I mean, I'm sure they wouldn't put anybody in there. The other two girls or other three girls that are in here, you want to put them as leading roles, that's for sure. <laughs> uh, how about this? My best character, and see if you can um, see why I picked this. Thomas Crowley, actual Kane Hodder, the guy is oh, okay. actually the father, because we've never actually had. A horror movie, it, but we have the same tropes with horror movies. Either they were abandoned, you know, at birth. The parents try to kill. The parents were, um, you know, cannibals themselves. Uh, they weren't in the picture, or you know, the parents were demons or something. But this was a caring father. Yeah, really caring father. And uh, you could see it when Kane Hodder played uh, Thomas Day. He was actually, um, um, he actually loved his son. He, of course, yeah. Like you say, he was definitely his protector until he stuck an axe in his head. <laughs> <laughs> no one told them fire safety. No. Drop and roll, <laughs> right? But yeah, he was... Wouldn't you he, say, he, get near the window, stand back, I'm putting an axe through. Is he... What? <laughs> what? <laughs> well, couldn't he just kick the door down? Well, he tried, didn't he? Yeah, but I mean, a couple more times would have, you know, yes. the, like you said, the glass windows. And especially with those heels that he's notoriously, <laughs> uh, <laughs> that he's known for, uh, Kane Hodder. Watch and out, this. son, here comes the boot. <laughs> <laughs> maybe he wasn't wearing them that day, you know? Yeah, maybe not. Here comes my heels. <laughs> Jeez. Like Six-inch platforms that he's always got on. <laughs> oh, but I also liked how uh, the story they're telling about him uh, that he actually died from a broken heart hmm. you know, because his son left him or he actually was, you know, the reason why his son left him. But yeah, I thought uh, Kane did a great job playing a protective father without any makeup on for yeah. a change. I mean, he's, he's not in it very long, is he? But it, no. he, it's good. You know, it's yeah. sad. It's sad, I guess, isn't it? But Yeah. 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 Um, no. Okay. Worst character. <laughs> Uh, the tour guide, Sean. I'm glad uh, we got that out of the way. <laughs> with a few outtakes on this one's bones. <laughs> we got them confused. We got them confused with someone else. But anyway, Sean, the tour guide, um, who's, um, yeah, something going on with those accents there. You know, sounds like he's coming from different parts of the world in different parts of the movie. Um, but yeah, incredibly annoying. Almost like a kind of younger Gilbert Gottfried, who is not annoying, by the way, and who is one of the funniest people, or was one bless of the funniest him. people. God bless him. Um, but yeah, this Sean character, who's the tour guide, um, yeah, great to see him get his comeuppance. I think it's a, the racial stereotype is kind of like eh, nails on the chalkboard. It's yeah. kind of like, stop it. Yeah. Stop trying yeah. to be funny. Yeah, yeah. 
It was awkward. <laughs> There's a few moments of awkwardness in this film now. Not that I'm personally offended, but I can see how some newcomers to this movie may be offended, particularly where the girls are concerned as well. Yeah. You know, that wouldn't happen today, I don't think, no. anyway. Um, but, um, yeah, it, yeah, certainly Sean is my worst character in this film. Sean is one step from being Mickey Rooney in Breakfast at Tiffany's. <laughs> It's kind of like that, right? Yeah. But he didn't. He doesn't need the glasses, does he? No. <laughs> no. You That's can't, the thing. You can't say that. <laughs> I did. Uh, okay. How about this? My worst character, uh, Shapiro, the pervert. Uh, give us a kiss. <laughs> yeah, you love it. The one who's always filming everything, <laughs> filming girls uh, making out, and then what makes him bad is that. We find out that he was trying to get a 14-year-old girl to get naked. The guy's a teacher. Was he a teacher? I know yeah. when they were going through his business cards, right? Yep. But yep. he was He's also actually, a part-time movie his, director. His, his, his main bread and butter is actually being a teacher. That's probably where he picks up these girls to do all this perverted shit. I mean, <laughs> there's enough swamp in the bayou than trying to get swamp ass <laughs> from girls. <laughs> Swamp ass. Isn't that a film that we're going to watch with, um, <laughs> with Ronnie and Blake? <laughs> I think it's Swamp Ape, but you know what? Oh, okay. Just each your own. I think it all falls together. <laughs> we all get a bit of swamp ass, don't we? <laughs> or mud butt. <laughs> mud butt. <laughs> okay, enough about uh, offending people's uh, ethnic backgrounds and perverts. Oh, what is your best line? Um... Well, uh, there, there was some confusion here with me with this. So you talk about Doug Shapiro. Now, when we first meet Doug and he's got those two girls with him and they're flashing their boobs and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, he turns around and says, Misty, Jenna, you can get along for a few more hours, can't you? <laughs> and then I think it's I think it's either I think it's Jenna that turns around and says, yeah, uh, she says, seriously, now, I thought she said, seriously, Dad, I can't work with her. I'm a professional actress. I went to NYU. I thought that Doug, I misheard what she said, and I thought, Jesus, this guy's making pornos with his daughter. <laughs> so that was initially my best line until later on when they find the wallet and they discover that he's got this kind of other career and all that sort of stuff that, that I realised... Yeah, I've misheard that, so I had to go back and listen to it again. <laughs> and she says, uh, she says, seriously, Dad. Sorry, she says, seriously, Doug, not Dad. It sounded mm. like Dad, but anyway. So anyway, so I had to look for another best line in this. Um, and it's the moment where um, the, the guy in the, in the bayou in the little boat is trying to warn them not to go off on the tour bus. And... Uh, <laughs> Sean turns around and says, don't mind him, that's just Jack Cracker. Hey! Where you think you're going? What's he saying? And Jenna says, Jack Cracker? And he says, yeah, yeah, just one of the local alligator hunters. He just sits there, yells things, drinks his own piss. He's, uh, you know, cracked. Yeah, yeah, one of the local alligator hunters just uh, sits there, yells things, uh, drinks his own piss. He's, uh, you know, uh, cracked. And then you get that shot, and it's actually John Carl Beekler, the director of um, Friday the 13th Part 7, uh, just out there drinking his own piss on the boat. <laughs> Special effects guru, did some Myers masks over his, t you know, in, in his time, did some Freddy stuff in his time, did uh, effects work on Friday the 13th. Absolute legend, passed away probably about four or five years ago, very sad. Too young. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's a great little cameo of his sitting there drinking his piss. So I kind of enjoyed that moment. <laughs> I actually think every time I see somebody, you know, talk about, you know, drinking their piss or, or making water, as they said in Shawshank Redemption. Uh, is it making water? Whatever. Uh, I have to make water. No, driving Miss Daisy. I'm sorry, driving Miss Daisy. I've got the more of my Morgan Freeman's mixed up. Uh, I always think of Silver Bullet. Remember when they're going into the swamp? Yeah. And you hear, 
Are you making lemonade? <laughs> Are you making lemonade in your pants? <laughs> and drinking his own piss, you know. Yeah. For fuck's sake. Um uh, how about this? This is this is this is this is words of um, words of, of to live by uh, for you kids growing up. Um, she was scratching herself all night. What do you mean you didn't know? You can't look up with you can't hook up with an itchy with itchy chicks, Marcus. Everybody knows that. <laughs> yeah, there's a <laughs> few references to the bitchiness between the two. Uh, girls, right? Actresses. The actresses. There's one. There's one moment where w- one accuses the other of having syphilis as well. God, brush your teeth much? Lick me, bitch. No thanks. I like my tongue without the syphilis. You're syphilis, Miss Big Words. Oh, then we'll get to that one. <laughs> no. Remember, kids, if they're scratching. <laughs> no, 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 no. There's always that video of that girl who scratches herself and sniffs it. Uh, okay, your worst line. Worst line is Marcus. And he's shouting at the top of his voice, trying to taunt um, Victor Crowley into appearing. And he's, he says, hey, asshole. Hey, asshole, come out, we're right here. Yeah, come out, get us, Crowley, where are you? Come on, you freak. You look like you've been molested by wolves. Yes, exactly. Worst Just- line molested by wolves okay even even victor was just like what the fuck did he just say <laughs> exactly it's a it's a, it's a I, was, I, was, I was what does he mean by that i don't to, even know to that me it horrible. looks like a poor kid who's had an axe put in his face yeah it's like hey you know did you know did you come out of your mother's ass that would have been something better you know or, or something like that or you know or your mother has sex with mules Where's that come from? That's from uh, Kickboxer. Was it really? <laughs> yeah. I bet their mother have sex with news. You what? Very good. That's, Very that's good. That's what Jean Claude Van Damme's doing. <laughs> <laughs> Remember the bar swinging his hips? Yes, I do. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, my worst line is anything from Jenna and Misty. They hate each other, and you know the lines like "lick me." Um, I went to NYU. Uh, t- your tongue has syphilis. You know, I'm just like, oh, God. And these are people that other people want to bang? Yeah, doesn't she say something about her, like, having bad breath at one point as well? Yeah, like, yeah. But she's, she's not licking me right. And I'm just like, <laughs> oh, my God. And if those two were on your tour... Would you be turned on or just trying to get off? I, think I mean, off push, the boat. Push them in. <laughs> Have them. Yeah. <laughs> Take me now. You'd be jumping in with the crocodiles, the alligators. <laughs> God, are they terrible? You know that scene in Total Recall when he's on the, um, uh, on the what do you call them? Escalator? Ele- no. Um, what do you yeah, call the escalator. Them? Escal- yeah. You call them escalators. Yeah. Oh, okay. And he's getting shot at, so he turns around and uses that guy as a shield. That's what I would have done with one of those girls. Definitely. Annoying as fuck. In fact, I didn't know. I don't know why I didn't um, pick them as my worst character. I never really thought about that. The, the the nudity may have helped a little bit. It could have done. It could have done. But even that didn't help, did it? No, not really. I mean, there, there's some. There's there's. I mean, again, this ain't an Oppenheim, an Oppenheimer love scene. <laughs> And this is what these two do, Jenna and Misty. Mm. You know, or against one of them has been on the Ams family. I get that. You know, and one of us, and they also been in Buffy the Vampire Slayer, the TV series. What of uh, two of them? No, the um, I think Misty, the 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 blonde girl. Yeah, Mercedes uh, yeah. McNabb. Yeah, she's been in Buffy the Vampire Slayer, the TV series. She's the little girl from. Um, um, oh, she's in the Adams Family film. The Adams wow. Family. Yep. She's yeah. she's in Hatchet too. Oh God! She you know what? She's she's probably on the film recording. Oh, okay. if I remember correctly. Ah, right, right. She's right. not around. She's not yeah. around. No, I hope not. <laughs> <clears throat> uh, best kill. 
Uh, best kill is uh, Shannon with her Ooh. head ripped into. Because I, I love that shot. You know, her husband's already been hacked in two, you know, from the shoulder downwards. He's already had his leg, uh, would his leg got bit or hacked out or something like that? I can't remember now. Was it Victor that slashed his leg or something? So they get him off the boat. They yeah, got him right here too in the collarbone area. Yeah, they're trying to get to the cabin really quickly. Victor comes up behind him and hacks him kind of in two parts. Um, and then his missus, his wife, Shannon, she's running towards the cabin and all in one shot that looks fantastic and i'm sure there must be a hidden cut in there victor mm -hmm. grabs her head from behind and hand in the jaw and rips her head backwards it's insane that kill it's just so well shot it really is that kind of 360 degrees camera going around it and everything and that you know the, that that kind of hidden cut between her head and the prosthetic Mm -hmm. But it just seamlessly blends. Your brain does all the work in between. And it looks incredible. It really does. It's one of the one of my favorite slasher kills for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I think we put it on our best like head explosions or heads uh, decapitations. <laughs> did we do uh, we, best I think decapitations? We, I think we did <laughs> head explosions. We did head explosions, right? Uh, yeah. Did we, did we count it as a head explosion? I we did I think we did. I think we did an honorable mention of it. Okay. It wasn't as good as Weird Al singing too high, you know, and, 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 and blowing up. Uh, but yeah, ladies, check out that, uh, ladies and gentlemen, check out that video. Our best favorite head explosion. Yeah, that was, that was uh, nuts. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my best kill, and I knew you were going to pick that, so I didn't want to do the same thing. Uh, is Ainsley Dunstan in the beginning? Hmm. Uh, what a way to open up a kill! Is him being pulled apart. <laughs> Ah! Help God! Help me! Yeah. Arm yeah. here, leg here, and to top it off, why not go through the back and maybe pull out some guts and a little bit of spine? <laughs> yeah. There are some really nasty graphic kills in this. They did a great job with the effects work. Um, There's no get... instant kill, is there? It's, no, it's all like everything's you, you're alive during everything's really prolonged um let me just have a look and see who did the makeup for this makeup department special effects ah it was it was beekler yeah, yeah john carl beekler did the special effects you can see why it's it's pretty it's pretty good yeah yeah great stuff <laughs> uh, okay not a lot of this but worst kill uh worst kill i would i've got to say robert england oh okay because, mm -hmm. you know, they managed to get Robert England onto this project. And you don't see what happens to him. But you, you can't kill him on screen, though. You can't? Why not? I don't think you should. You know, you can kill Robert England, but you shouldn't kill we him shouldn't see on him screen. Die? Yeah, unless he's Freddy, because that's, that's, that's makeup and everything. I'm but sure us... he's died on screen before outside of being Freddy. Uh, and had and and uh, what is it? The Mangler, I think he did, but mm. he was wearing makeup, of course. Uh, he wasn't wearing makeup in this one. He, he, he he's actually recognizable as Robert. Him. He's not your child. Bloody hell! <laughs> I want to see Robert die. All we do is we find his body. Uh, there, there wasn't even a noise. Like Victor Crowley's a noisy killer. Mm. A lot of noise, a lot of screaming, a lot of grunting and groaning and, you know, and there's nothing with this. You you just find, they just find his body and I presume he's been kind of torn apart with his yeah, bare guts. hands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Guts um, all over. But uh, yeah, it's just kind of a bit of a letdown. I would like to have seen him kind of, you know, maybe they didn't have the time with him. Maybe they just filmed that moment in the boat and said, right, Robert, jump into this prosthetic. We're going to throw some goo at you corn syrup all over your face and take a few shots is that all right anyway, yeah whatever 100 grand um, i'm getting paid yeah 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 okay uh, i mean I, okay uh, i i give it for what it's worth i don't want to see robert die on screen unless he's in makeup that's just me personally okay. he's, he's, he's like father christmas to us horror fans <laughs> uh how about this week uh worst kill or weakest kill for me is victor victor crawley because i i 
the beginning, the beginning part with the with the hatchet in the face. Okay, it's yeah. such a sad moment, such he, a sad moment. I I'd rather see him have gotten caught in the fire and not been able to get out. Yeah, yeah. And then we can have a reason. Well, he did get out, mm. and then you know his father. You know, while he was recovering, he came back to the house and saw his father die, uh, or something like that. Or you know, uh, maybe uh, his father sacrificed himself. You know, to save to save Victor, uh, or something like that. But it, I thought that was kind of sad. That's a father, you know, saving, trying to save his kid, and then causing him to die. But do we do we know that he actually dies? I don't know. That head has some kind of shield around it. <laughs> because there's, there's mentions of him being, you know, a ghost or something supernatural or, you know. But do you think he's just kind of like buried out in the bayou or something and and uh, and just survived somehow? I think he did survive. I think he survived. His dad didn't know it. And yet his dad felt you know, responsible and, and rightly so. And uh, by the time Victor recovered, um, Thomas uh, died. Hmm. Because I don't know, because the whole point of Hatchet and the whole lore was that Victor was trying to look for his father. And, uh, you know, and, and just anybody who uh, came into his territory, he killed. And But I, I, for me, it is Victor for that first kill, if you want to call it. Yeah, yeah, got it, yeah. All right. Um, best moment. Um, oh, you know I love a, a fire walk. Um, so I, I've got to say the, the finale of this. Um, he's already been shot and hit and stabbed and God knows what else numerous times. But yet we have to go through a fire walk as well, which I thought was mm -hmm. a, they all throw gasoline on him and set him alight, um, which he survives and then comes back again without hair, which you will see on our thumbnail. That is Victor Crowley burnt. Um, hopefully YouTube doesn't take it down. Um, it's too real. <laughs> yeah. But, um, yeah, I just... Uh, and, and again, if it was Kane Hodder, tipping the hat to you, buddy, because we all know that, you know, Kane Hodder went through a horrific fire experience when he was a lot younger, back in the late 70s, um, overcame it and, and did the stunt in New Blood, um, and I'm sure he's done other fire stunts since. But if he did do this, congratulations, sir, because it's another great fire stunt that he's uh, he's pulled off. Um, so, yeah, so I, I think that those last five or ten minutes... And the, my only criticism with that kind of finale is the way that the movie ends, where it just kind of cuts off like they've run out of film or something. It just stops dead, right? Doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Why are you laughing? <laughs> yeah, it just it just ends, and I'm just it's kind of like okay, that's it, that's a wrap. We don't have any more film. <laughs> yeah, we could. Yeah, that's it. We're done. No more. <laughs> it's, it's 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 kind of like uh, in True Lies with uh, the cameraman. Battery disease. <laughs> He's there, just filming nothing. You know, just just the battery went dead. Maybe that's what happened here. Maybe, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a song called Pull Me Under by Dream Theater, and the end of the song ends like that. Just cuts off. Yeah. And, and then if you put it on repeat, you're kind of like, is this song going on forever? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, and it, and I'm like, why, did, why didn't they finish the song or fade it out or something yeah. like that? Then it's like someone pulled the plug. But when you when it, the, they kind of re-recorded -re it years later, they actually put a nice ending onto it. So, yeah. It's like Beck's devilish, hair, devilish haircut. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it just, like, it just comes right out. You're just like, what the fuck? Yeah, totally. It just ends. It just feels unprofessional. Anyway. <laughs> uh, my best moment is the act interaction between father and son, Thomas and Victor, or Victor and Thomas. Um, oh, Thomas and Victor. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. Uh, I, I like that moment. You know, it's just, it, it it's, this is not like uh, Oswald Coppelpot's uh, parents in, in, in Return of, in the Return of Batman, uh, Batman Returns, where they throw him in a fucking sewer just to be <laughs> ended with it. Uh, this is a father that actually cared for his child and didn't care about the disfigurement or anything like that. He actually loved his son. And I don't think that's something we ever got recently 
um, in a uh, in a horror movie hmm. or you know a slasher like this. Um, I thought it was kind of sweet. I thought it was nice. Yeah, you are going just soft. Like, just like how you would adopt a one-eyed cat with three legs. Yeah, I would. See, <laughs> I no different. I wouldn't crow on about it on our YouTube channel, though. Oh, okay. <laughs> 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 you certainly wouldn't axe it, the axe it through. Uh, <laughs> you would just throw it out the window. Lay it on your feet. Yeah, all Something three of them. That. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Badass Ninja, I hope we did justice to, to uh, hatch it for you. Um, good good uh, series. Uh, and, again, we're, as we say, there's no Shakespeare in this, but no. the gore. We go for the gore. Yeah, yeah. And that's it's what fun. horror is. It's, yeah, it's fun. And Yeah, and thanks to Chris, Badass Ninja, for uh, for asking us to do this. This is one we thought about doing for a long time. So, um, yeah, it was a good opportunity for us to to get stuck into some Victor Crowley. Mr. Crowley. All right, ladies and gentlemen, as always, stick to the roads. And the best of luck. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.